Hola folks, for I am the one, the only, I am Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo. It's a special show, as you can tell by this little picture. Yes, so wait a second, because I very rarely get on the show. You know what? Hit my music. So yes, <laughs> while that ridiculous hobo Tom was at work, I, Iho del, Vagab Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo, snuck into his house. Well, Ashley just sat next to him and laughed at him while he was sleeping at work. Very bad hobo Tom. He should not be sleeping at work. Muy male. But nope. I was here on his computer having some of his tequila and I was watching a rerun of NXT again Halloween Havoc not to be confused with the Daytona Beach Bumfight League special coming up soon the Havoc of Halloween actually I do have to do some. oh well I can do that later that's okay C C C so let's talk about some NXT. It's been a long time since I've watched NXT, especially just the regular TV show. And I was kind of disappointed where this wasn't its own standalone show like the old Halloween Havoc used to be. I'm also kind of disappointed that no one was electrocuted, just like Abdul the Butcher was electrocuted in one of the Halloween Havocs when they had like the insane match. So yeah, um, starts off, and whoa, Shotzi's a little freaky looking. Sh she's a freak. I didn't realize her tits were so big, but that's neither here nor there. It's here. Oh, and also, historical fact, this is the first time in 20 years that it's been a Halloween Havoc. Wow, that's interesting. And let's see here, I wanted to see... If anyone was going to get electrocuted. And. I have. This something. I don't know. Some days I can barely read my own handwriting. But that's okay. I have. Two. Oh yes. <laughs> I'll get into that because I heard something there. So it starts off, spin the wheel, make the deal with Shotzi Blackheart in like a naked giantess outfit. Weird. Again, kind of that freaky Shotzi Blackheart thing. The funny thing is there were only like, I think there were only like two spin the wheel, make the deal matches. So that was a normal match. That was an... Wait a second. There were only... One, two... There were only three spin the... Every one of these matches should have been spin the wheel, make the deal match. Oh, I just realized that. I'm kind of disappointed now. Huh. I did not realize that. I just saw pro wrestling. I'm like, ah, spin the wheel, make the deal. Only happened three times, though. Uh, Paul, Paul, Paul Levesque. You're teasing us way too much. That's not cool, man. Um, so, and I, I'll, I'll get into that later. Um, so, Damien Priest and Johnny Gargano is next. Damien Priest just, like, teleports into ring as... Undead vampire music guy, party person. I have no idea what he is. I missed um, Punishment Martinez because now I'm Damien Priest. And he was taking on Johnny Gargano, and Johnny Gargano came out dressed like a like a 
bit more fuller Jack Skeleton, and then he like killed the, the he killed the inflatable pumpkin. What did that pumpkin ever do to you? But we shall have the revenge of the pumpkin. Um, and this is a Devil's Playground match, which means false count anywhere, no DQ. So again, um, pretty good. Um, the start of the match, Damien uh, Damien Priest hits a big flatliner. And uh, throws Johnny Gargano in the corners. Big jumping elbows in the corner. Uh, he slips off the rope. He does a fly. He, he tried to do the Undertaker walk the rope thing. He kind of slipped. Um, again, depending where this was at, I want to say this was the Thunderdome. Mainly because they had the TV screen set up. I think the only thing they had to do was put up like wire fence. So it's not like they, it's not like they really had to do much. But yeah, um, he tried to do the Undertaker spot where he was going to go on the top rope, deliver the hand, the, the kind of chop, the single axe handle down to the shoulder or head. He slipped. He he jumped over the rope, uh, hit a big flying punch though instead. Not bad though. I mean, it depends where it is. The humidity in Florida will, will kill wrestlers because the, the condensation gets on the ropes, and I've seen so many wrestlers pissed off at so many Florida wrestling arenas. It's, it's, I can't even imagine it. Uh, John, Johnny, uh, he, Gargano, he could not hit the slingshot spear. Um, it was almost turned into like a draping scorpion death drop. That would have been pretty cool. And then I'll tell you what, then Johnny Gargano found some kendo sticks under the mat. But you know what? Damien Priest raised the stakes. He found a nightstick. A solid nightstick. Hmm. Not as long. So the kendo stick has to reach. But the kendo stick will kind of break apart. Nightsticks don't break apart. Then uh, the, he goes, runs up the ramp. Um, priest, well, Priest used the steps against him. <laughs> they go up the ramp. They brawl up the ramp. Johnny Gargano got rolled up into the pumpkin. That's what you get for deflating the pumpkin. He gets rolled up to the pumpkin. And then, yes, Damien Priest stomps on him and kicks him a little bit more while he's in the pumpkin, which is smart. Um, then there was, then he, uh, John Gargano found the kendo stick, some, some good shots to Damien Priest. That was pretty good. Uh, there was a big sidewalk slam by Damian Priest. This was a really consistent back and forth match, very much so in the NXT match where there's no one sided way, with the exception of I think yeah, for, for for one match. But this was a really much a very give and take match. Uh, Priest got flatlined into the fence. That was pretty impressive to see. Uh, Gargano got the broken arrow on top of the table. Then, then, like, Johnny Gargano went to open the coffin, and, oh, uh, something came out, and he super kicked some prop. That was kind of funny to see. Uh, a little bit more uh, beating on Damien Priest. They go up to the top area. Both get kind of teased into falling into the coffin. Then some odd figure. Who could that be? Who could Johnny Gargano and... and Candice LeRae be having a threesome with. Oh, oh, who who could be helping them? I didn't mean to say that. Bad El, bad Iho El Hobo Del Vagabundo. Dirty, dirty, dirty thoughts. Would be interesting though. But wait, I digress. Um, so yeah, so Scareface comes out. <laughs> Larry gives a pipe to Johnny Gargano. He uses that pipe on Damien Priest. Johnny Gargano wins, and we have a new North American champion. And I'll tell you what, it was a fun match. Um, kind of contrived. I'll tell you what, it was a good, solid cheeseburger match. And then <laughs> Wade Barrett's there with um a, a Vic, whoever. And Vic's dressed up as Where's Waldo? And Wade Barrett just rips into him. Why are you dressed as? Because there's only one one costume I need. And that's because I've got some bad news for you. Because I'm bad news, Barrett. 
came back and that was pretty cool. Um, Cameron Grimes and Steven Regal start backstage. I guess this was a spin the wheel, make the deal match made last week. Uh, Cameron Grimes got shuffled in into a van, which is never which Pat McAfee steps out of. Odd. Um, so, oh no, who did step out of the van? I forget. Yeah, someone stepped out of the van. Then let's see here. Um, undisputed. Uh, oh, oh, I did not know this. Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch finally won the tag team belts. They deserve it. They 100% deserve it. I've seen their work before. Um, Oni Lorcan as as as, as uh, Biff is Busick is amazing. Danny Burch is amazing. I like the fact that these two of them, they came together because they would fight all the time. And they realized, hey, instead of fighting each other, we're going to fight other people together in tag teams. This is actually a really good one, two combination. And they came out with Pat and Pat McAfee. And he goes, well, well, well. Like, wait a second. There's only one person in all of wrestling that would go, well, well, well. And that is because, well, well, well. It is I, the quintessential stud muffin. The girl who has my phone number on her cell phone because she loves the way I star 69er, Joel. He is, I am more tongue-in-cheek than a lesbian orgy, Gertner, the quintessential stud muffin. So when he said, well, 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 that's gimmick infringement, sir. You should be copyright violated. Shame on you. Shame. Should should go to the, the, the dark hallway over there and feel shame. Again, only Joel Gertner should ever say those three words. In any introduction. Well, well, well. Who does he think he is? Uh, but he can't get cuts a good promo. Then we have the undisputed era, or at least we have Kyle O'Reilly showing up. Um, then uh, he starts to cut a promo. Uh, of course, Danny Birch, they kind of cheated to win to get their the tag team belts, which rightly belongs to the undisputed era. And then Pete Dunn comes out and then he turns on Kyle Riley and, and starts to break his hands. Ouch. Um, oh yeah, in the van. So we have um, previously we had Steven Regal leading Cameron Grimes to the back where there's a van. And guess who comes out of the van? Woo! No, not, no, not Ric Flair. But Michael P.S. Hayes of the fabulous Freebirds. Indeed. And then, of course, Cameron Grimes got into the van. Then we have Escobar Santos, or Santos Escobar, also known as Hijo del Fantasmo, taking on Jake Atlas. Um, this was a good showing for Jake Atlas. I don't think Jake Atlas is 205 pounds, so he's a little, he's, he's actually pretty muscular. He's a little too muscular, I think. To be that 205 pounds. Um, Escobar goes right after Jake Atlas. Eventually, Jake Atlas does make a comeback. Um, big European uppercut by Jake Atlas. Jake Atlas is going to be a really good wrestler. He has the look for it. Uh, he needs the experience. Again, Ijo Del Fantasma. He has the three other guys by his side. He has um, DJ Z. <laughs> I forget what they call him in WWE. Joaquim something. But it's, it's DJ Z. And Raul Mendoza. So yeah, they have they have the Lucha Cartel, which is by the way probably the most. I'll tell you what, Ijo del Fantasma came out in Rey Mysterio inspired gear. Bravo, bravo, señor. Bien, 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 bien. Um, from there, there was a top. He, Jake also did. Jake Ellis did an amazing top rope cartwheel DDT, which was great. Um, of course, you have DJ Z kind of being the distraction. Escobar finally does finish, 
finish off Jake Atlas. This was a good match. This was a fun match. You know, Del Fantasmo's tremendous wrestler. Such an addition. I do like the Lucha Cartel. I would like to see Kalisto try to join it and have like some like gangland initiation or something and have him beat up. Actually, that'd be neat. Lucha Party versus the Lucha Cartel. Bien. Now, this was another good match. This was a good cheeseburger match. And then, whoa! Shotzi Blackheart change into, like, some outfit. When did she get a such large bosom? Tell you what, it, made, it almost made my eyes pop out of my mask when I saw that. I was shocked. I knew it was there, but, but not like that. Normally she's all like in that spandex. That spandex. Mm, indeed. So then we have our ha Haunted House of Terror match. Um, between Cameron Grimes and Dexter Loomis. Uh, Cameron Grimes walks up to the house, which is stupid to begin with. He should turn around, walk back on the road to Orlando. No one's out there on roads on Orlando anyway, except for, except for well, maybe Senior Hobo Tom, but who knows. Um, so yeah, Dexter Loomis is little hiding the tree. You have the undead ref. Um, <laughs> Grimes, Grimes locks someone in the closet, and oh, that, that 80 in smiles, the 80 decor bathroom, the gray tiles with the pink tiles. Oh, so much of the 80s is coming back. Don't you forget about it. We had that 80s inspired bathroom decor. You had like that, like some woman taking a shower and, and Cameron Grimes is, he's getting a little too excited there. You know, he's almost getting ex excited, as 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 I was see seeing all seeing poor little Shasi Blacker almost pop out of her outfit. But yeah, um, it's the girl from the ring is there, like the one of the contortionists. Uh, look great, and he has to learn never to go by the window because then Dexter Loomis comes out comes out from the window, starts to attack him. You have the undead actors chasing him. Um, or enhancement talent, who knows? <laughs> Grimes gets attacked by zombies. Loomis is found in the van as he tries to get away. <laughs> so he did the thing. Cameron Grimes did the thing he should have done a while ago. And that's just run away. And to be continued. This match hasn't ended yet. But instead, I shall put a little break. In the action. And let's see here. Then it was Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Gonzalez. Raquel Gonzalez is more of a menacing... I don't know if it's a menacing look. It's a different look. I kind of miss... Oh, I should put that as a thumbnail. Yeah, I'll do that later. Yeah, I saw that picture. I miss Raquel Gonzalez as generic Texas woman. She came out in normal pants, bra, vest, whereas before it would be like a sports bra, women's underwear, assless chaps. Who knows? Maybe that. Maybe, I do know in the in the one. <laughs> I know when she came to here in T Daytona Beach, her assless chaps like the buckle broke and was like falling all over the place. But that was just funny. <laughs> Wardrobe malfunction. That was riotous. I kind of miss her like that though. Um, maybe it's what I'm used to. Again, check out that opening thumbnail. Then let's see. So this was Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Gonzalez. It's a unique unique thing. It's power versus power. Rhea Ripley really hasn't faced anyone as big as Raquel Gonzalez. Um, Raquel Gonzalez is just used to beating up like poor girls, like like geez, uh, Lacey Lane. She 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 beats on all the time. Um, uh, Kat Nazaros, she would beat up all the time. 
uh, before she turned bad. She would beat up Aaliyah a lot. Well, who else was really short? Let's turn to the door of wrestling. Let's see here. Zia Lee, she would beat up. Karen Q, she would beat up. Yeah, anyone really is shorter than her. So, yeah. <laughs> so, again, this is a little bit different for both of them. Um, Rhea Ripley goes to the front face lock. Uh, Raquel says enough of that. Um, then they go punch for punch. And then it just turns to a, again, turns to a slugfest. Um, kind of different. Uh, Rhea is taken down by the hair. Again, classic heel move. Um, Rhea Ripley black. Block the suplex, flips over. Um, she goes to do the wrecking ball drop kick, which is kind of becoming more more prominent every so often. Rhea does get power bombs into the fence. <sighs> they need to put little. I don't know if you're going to get tossed into it. If I got tossed into my fence, I'd probably be bleeding, and I'd probably get like three different bacterial diseases. So they have to do something with that fence. If you're going to go into a fence, like you have to have like like a like a pimple on your back or, or like a pre-cut on your back. So you, so you just get bloody. Even if you are a woman, that way it, it makes sense. You can suspend your disbelievability that it's, that it's staged when you see people bleeding like that. Again, like uh, I think a coworker, um, my, my assistant boss and I were discussing, it's like, yeah, I bet you light tube shots hurt. Not really. Light tube shots, they, they go right across the back. It's freaking falling on the glass that hurts. It's not the light tube shot itself. You know, go, ah, my back. No, it's, it's falling on the shattered glass. That is the most painful part of it. Uh, Gonzalez, she does a shoulder rack to Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, I'm sure not used to that. Rhea Ripley did a big backdrop to uh, Raquel Gonzalez. And there was a top rope spell. Ra Raquel goes to the top rope. <laughs> Uh, they both go to the top rope. Raquel falls down, and Raquel literally like tosses Rhea Ripley from corner to corner. That was great. Uh, Rhea counters with something. Um, she hits the dominance on Raquel Gonzalez. It was a good enough match. Actually, you know what? It was a really good match. It was a surf and surf match. The only thing, and I can't fault it because I didn't catch it at the time, this was not a spin-the-wheel and make-the-deal match. This should have been a spin-the-wheel and make-the-deal match, and it should have been like like a cowbell match or something, a cowbell on a pole. Um, then as we come back to the ring, um, we see Cameron Grimes running down some Orlando street. Uh, he's almost there to the Performance Center. Then Drake Maverick, <laughs> he, he has he has a two point four inch pythons. Uh, he's Hollywood Hulk Hogan for uh, Halloween. He gets jumped by the Yeti and the Giant, and then Big Damo, a uh, killing Dane, comes out as a shock master, the helmet and everything. He's like, I'm not tripping. I don't care. I care what the shock master did in the past. Um, as soon as Drake Maverick puts on the helmet, he trips over something. Just <laughs> uh, Back to the rim, uh, Grimes realizes that he's in the ring. Uh, the weird smoke machine takes over the ring. He, he kind of stumbles around the ringside area. There's very props set up. Um, he stumbles into the graveyard. Not necessarily where you want to be. Uh, Dexter Loomis gets in the ring. Um, that's smack. Ouch, that hurt. Uh, Loomis eats a boot. Um, Loomis power bombs a zombie onto Grimes. Again, the whole thing's like Grimes, like we're not at the house anymore, man. We're not at the house, man. Let me leave me alone. I'm sorry, man. Um, then Dexter Loomis puts Cameron Grimes in into the uh, head and arm choke, and Dexter Loomis wins with the help of some zombies. Overall, it was a fun cinematic match. Cheeseburger match.
And then we go back to spin the wheel, make the deal. So again, only three matches were spin the wheel, make the deal. Kind of disappointed about that. Um, before this, Tommaso Ciampa gives a promo. He's very upset, whatever. Um, and find, we find out that we're going to have a table, ladders, and scares match. Um, Poppy comes out, and I didn't realize that she had the voice of Slayer. It was weird. Um, definitely, I could not match that voice to any female voice I've ever heard before. Yoshari comes out. She's all psyched up. Candice LeRae has her, like, broken angel wings on. Um, I didn't realize how short Candice LeRae is. And, and Candice LeRae got a little old and, and Kmart mommy-like for some reason. Um, EO, the first thing, does a splash onto the floor onto Candice LeRae. And then there's so we see there's so many ladders under the ring. And then what's in and then Candice Lee pulls out a bag. What's in the bag? It's a bag I, I'm like, oh, oh, please be gummy bears. Please be oh oh yeah, candy corn. Gummy bears and candy corn. And it was like body it was fake body parts. Whoa. So that's where the scare part comes in. Um Candice Ray is absolutely horrified by those. Because that's not what she expected. I guess she expected like gummy bears. Again, going back to her famous match versus the Young Bucks, whereas Joey Ryan, who's now a very bad word to say, switched the bag of thumbtacks out with a bag of gummy bears. So yeah, I was half expecting the gummy bears. Instead, you get body parts. EO takes those body parts. Because heaven knows, Candace should have been busted open by that chair shot, because God knows when Matt Hardy got got hit, hit in the chair the same way he bled like a stuffed pig. So again, Kenneth LeRae, you needed to do the blade job. You did it for the Young Bucks. You should have done it now for Io Shirai. Uh, then Io hit an air raid crash in the ring, starts to set up the ladders. Uh, LeRae hits the right to Valhalla, I forget what she calls it. And then just, there's so many chairs in the ring. You know something bad's going to happen. It was a it was a tiger style backbreaker by Io Shirai. Uh, however, then she went up to go hit her amazing moonsault, missed. Candice LeRae rolled out of the way, and Io Shirai landed on chairs. Ouch! Again, metal chairs sometimes do have little like metal protrusions on them. Not very good. Then there was. Oh, that wasn't even the ouchy spot. But Io hit a meteora onto the ladder. Again, that was just insane. Um, Io catches the foot of Lare of Laray <laughs> with a chair. That was pretty amazing. Um, tries to break the ankle. Io then does a swinging net breaker through the through a table from the apron table that they already set up. So many spots in this match. This was actually really cool, though. Uh, from there... Who... Uh, yeah. Uh, Scareface came in. Because Candice already had the, had the ladder set up. Scareface puts Candice on her shoulder so she can get that quick extra steps. Shasi came in. Uh, put Scareface on... Her neck and uh, her neck and back in the electric chair position, and we had a and she did the electric chair drop onto the chair. So Scareface is now out. Uh, Shasi Blackheart, she was dressed up as as a devil, w way too sexy and hot and and, and busty for for being a, a devil. But yeah, nonetheless, she dressed up as a devil, showing off plenty of cleavage. And then, yep. So now. Candice Ray has to go up the ladder. Io Shirai sets up another another ladder side by side. You can tell Candice's ladder was not directly underneath because she had to kind of stretch to try to get that belt. Eventually, Io Shirai pushed the ladder with Candice LeRae onto it, and she fell on the other ladder. Oh, again, they have to be careful. Already, ladders are known to have a mind of their own. And the tables, ladders, and scares match, or table, ladders, and chairs match, you know who always wins? The ladder always wins. So you have to be careful with those. The ladders, they just have a mind of their own in the, in the ring. Uh, so Candice LeRae is dead. 
Uh, that lets Io Shirai get the belt. Io Shirai retains. I'll tell you what. Bravo. It was a surf and turf match. And that was Halloween Havoc for NXT. It was just fun enough. It was good. Again, I would have wanted to see it longer. Every match should have meant something, and every match should have been a spin the wheel and make the deal match. Again, with um, you could have done a hair versus hair match. That would have been amazing. With Ijo Del Fantasma and Jake Atlas, you could have figured out something else to do. Uh, the one match, it could have been a cowbell on, on a pole match. It could have been something different. Again, that would have made it feel a little bit more special. But that's just my opinion. Overall, eh, it was a cheeseburger show. And that was a rare NXT show that I've reviewed. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. A uh, very quick reminder, remember, uh, tomorrow night, um, Hobo Tom will be back. And he'll be doing his SmackDown review. Um, Saturday on All Hallows Eve. Yes. Si, si. Bien, bien, bien. Yes, we shall have... Well, that means that's start getting messed up out. But yeah, um, we'll have the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. The Havoc of Halloween. Not to be confused with Halloween Havoc. We to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, buenos noches, señoras, señoritas, and I guess señores. Bye. Bye con Dios.